syndrome, like many disorders, is actually part of a spectrum disorder. The major sign of Tourette's are tics. Almost everything, including eye blinking to head twitching, with Tourette's sitting at the extreme end of the spectrum of these involuntary movements. Now, the explosive swearing or other socially inappropriate remarks happen in only a tiny minority of cases, but there can be a wide variety of involuntary noises made by the mouth as a result of Tourette's. The source of the problem in the brain relates to the thalamus and the basal ganglia, especially in a region called the caudate nucleus, which is actually slightly smaller in people with Tourette's, with a greater reduction in size having some correlation to the uh, severity of the tics that are actually expressed as a child. These areas of the brain are partially responsible for fine motor control and deciding which actions to take, which actions not to take. For instance, if you're carrying a bowl of hot soup and you suddenly get an itch on the end of your nose, this part of your brain enables you to carry the soup without spilling it and at the same time resist the impulse to scratch your nose at least until you've safely put the soup down. In Tourette's, this resistance to one or more specific impulses is actually removed and the tics are what result. The same general region of the brain is also affected by obsessive compulsive disorder and the proportion of adults with Tourette's who also have OCD is far higher than the general population. The likelihood is that the development or lack of development of the caudate nucleus is genetically inherited. But because the brain is actually quite good at compensating for early injury or poor development to parts of the brain, inheritance is actually only part of the story. Tourette's generally develop during childhood, especially from the ages of about 10 to 12 years old. It's far more common among males than among females. So there may be a relationship between puberty and the onset of Tourette's. This possibility is reinforced since about half of the people who have Tourette's as a child, by the time the adult brain has finished developing, they either no longer have Tourette's or only have very minor symptoms. Now, because of the movements caused by Tourette's, may also in, it cause people to experience things like injuries and sleep problems and social isolation. This may in turn lead to things like depression and anxiety and other disorders. Sometimes it may be difficult to assess which conditions are actually directly related to Tourette's and which result of the impact of Tourette's on the person's actual life and their environment and their lifestyle. However, it's not all bad news. The reduction in impulse control may be associated in Tourette's, may also enable people with the condition to short circuit some kind of decision making that they will have then generally greater motor control, creativity and attention to detail than people without Tourette's. Tourette's may affect about 1% of the general population, but because the signs may either be overlooked or misinterpreted, can't actually be sure on the numbers. There are some drugs which will actually reduce the symptoms and the severity of the tics, but there's actually no cure for Tourette's. However, as stated, the general signs and symptoms reduce with time, and there's actually no impact on the actual lifespan or general life prospects of a person with Tourette's.